We statues don't usually leave our pedestals when people are around, but I've got to keep up with the folks that are continually defacing me. What? You don't believe I'm a statue? I admit I'm a special kind of statue. I represent something you can't see or touch. You don't understand? Well, I'll tell you how I have it. It all started about four years ago. When I first came to college, I didn't even know what a fraternity was. Oh, I'd heard rumors and stories, but they only made it more difficult to find out the truth. As a freshman, I was awed and confused. College was so different from it, I was confronted with so many new faces, a new way of life, a whole new environment. At first, I was lonely. Being with thousands of students makes you feel mighty insignificant. Oh, I got to know a few fellow students. I wasn't exactly the square. But these acquaintances were so casual, so general. Then one day, I found some rushing invitations in my mailbox. These were invitations to attend parties and get-togethers sponsored by the different fraternities on campus. Several more came in the next few days, so I thought I'd better look into the situation. After spending several hours on the phone, RSVPing, I started out to the first affair. On my way, I tried to visualize what would happen. I wonder, would they test my strength? 76. Oh. 77. Oh. 78. Oh. What's the matter? 78 all you can do? Or would they try my intellect? OK, let's be square about this. Maybe they'll test my wit. You heard the one about the girl and the professor? <laughs> no. You haven't? What's the matter? Don't you get around much? Maybe they'll have me filling out forms. Or maybe they'll give me the third degree. Oh, no! <sighs> I decided then to concentrate on my driving. My imagination wasn't helping matters any. When I arrived, I marched up to the front door, rang the bell, and waited. The door opened and I saw a hand, a smile, and then received a cheery greeting. And then a barrage of hands, smiles, and cheery greetings. At this first party, we just sat around talking and playing cards. At parties given by other houses during the week, we went swimming, played volleyball, and sang songs, saw movies, played golf, and did all the things that allow fellows to get to know each other. At the end of that week, my head was swimming with the names of hundreds of fellows I had met and the histories and traditions of the dozens of fraternity houses. And then I received a couple of bids to join houses. The decision was up to me. That's the hardest part of being a rushee. They were both good houses of fine members. I had to weigh all factors, the living quarters, finances, reputations, and most important of all, the fellows themselves. They were the ones I would live with the next four years in a brotherhood in which their goals and ideals would become mine. I would share in their traditions and assume their qualities. It was my opportunity to choose the men who would be my fraternal brothers, not only during my college years, but during my entire lifetime. I made my decision and became a pledge. But I still couldn't comprehend the great extent of fraternity membership. I saw it then only as a richer college life, offering limitless incentives to work and play as hard as I could. As one of a dozen in my pledge class, I had specific study hours during which the quiet periods in the house were strictly enforced. The brothers gave me a high standard of scholarship to maintain. I received informal lessons in table manners and social etiquette. My vocabulary was extended in two directions. In one direction, through intellectual discussions with alumni and the brothers, and in the other direction, well, from another source. All in all, I learned the fundamentals of effective group living. By the end of that first semester, I was thoroughly versed on our fraternity history, the Greek alphabet, and the ideals of the fraternity man. I was now ready for initiation. Now, if everybody's finished dinner, we'll adjourn to the chapter room. The <coughs> high and mighty members of our fraternity have a little proclamation to deliver to our lowly pledges. Something to do with initiation, I believe. <laughs> the 
pledges will step forward. The active chapter has voted that you are to be initiated into the bonds of this fraternity. You will report here at 4 o'clock in the afternoon this Wednesday. Bring your work clothes and be prepared to stay several days. I don't mind telling you it's going to be a pretty rough initiation. But we're going to give you a chance to make it easy on yourself. All we want is a little information. We didn't mind the damage done by your pledge ditch. We can even overlook the overturned furniture, the raided ice box, the soap on the windows, and the stolen fuses. These were only mild inconveniences. But we want the name of the pledge who put the molasses on all of the bathroom fixtures. Well, all right. You'll all pay come Wednesday. And by the way, you all have my deepest sympathy. Several days later, it was over, and we were all regular members and were at a special banquet. When dinner was over, one of our alumni was asked to give a speech. At the time, I thought I understood every word he said, but now I find it took me the full four years to discover what he really was talking about. Believing that great advantages are to be derived from a brotherhood of college men, appreciating that close association may promote friendship, develop character and leadership, and assist in the acquisition of a sound education, our fraternity has intensely sought the advancement of these principles. Since its founding, this faith of the founders finds expression today in the program of the fraternity, the primary object of which is to augment the work of the colleges and universities in training and developing strong citizens, fitted for leadership in the complex life of the present age. No one can succeed in spite of his innate capacities and abilities without the guidance and support of his friends and associates. There's no such thing as a self-made man. Success comes not alone from personal knowledge, but, and important as that is, but it is closely dependent upon one's ability to get along with others, to profit by their experiences, and to share their own experiences with them. The purpose of a college education is to prepare the student for the art and business of living. The objective of the fraternity is to assist the individual in attaining this purpose. There is a law which brings men together in groups. It acts like the law of gravity. And regardless of what is done to divert it, it holds true. From this law, it will form the character and fashion the life of the members, and thus contribute so substantially to the order decorum, scholarship, and culture of the whole university. And to our new brothers, I want to say welcome. Welcome to your fraternity. This is your house. Take care. It was a long speech, but that's the part I remember and have lived to understand. Now, as a regular member, I found that my first semester held only a small fraction of the richness of college life that was ahead of me. What took up most of my time, and rightly so, were my classes and homework assignments. Here I was saturated with the foundation of my education, taking notes in psychology, reciting in my French class, writing essays in English, and lab work in chemistry. But when classes were out and my assignments completed, I was always anxious to help out in our intramural athletic team. We did well almost every season, topping awards in several sports. One year it was football and bowling. The next it was baseball and track. Then the school show came along and the fellas talked me into trying out. I certainly was thankful when I saw who else was trying out for the show. It was Marge the girl I met at the pledge ditch. Okay, you two, fill out these cards, please. Hi, Marge. Looks like we're in the show together, huh? That's what we get for being so talented. Oh, you're not a bad dancer at all, Marge. Well, you're not bad yourself, Fred. Dancing? I wonder what part we'll get in the show. Well, we got a pretty good part. And the rehearsals kept us together quite a lot. We worked wonderfully with one another and got along great. She was easy to fall for, and I fell. Fred, time to get up. Rise and shine. Oh, don't bother me. 
Can't win it. Ah, it's wonderful to be in love. This is what they call Fraternity Row. Oh, yes, where they have all the wild parties. <gasps> Just look at that. Such morals. They must be drinking in that house. So this is supposed to be an institution of learning. <laughs> I'd like to see this getting every paper in the country. Dinner ready? How can you think of eating after what you did this morning? What? What? Look at this. Oh, no! You really fouled up the works this time. Hey, something's <laughs> phony here. This is no newspaper. <laughs> what do you mean? It cost me 75 cents to have them printed up. Oh, what a card. Oh, I guess it could happen, though, the way some of the newspapers... Hey, fellas! Look who's here! It was Hank. It seemed funny to see him in uniform. I was so used to him swinging a paddle. And now he was using a rifle. We cornered him with questions about his new career. He was made to feel just like one of the fellows again. Joe had given his pin to his girl, and we kept up the old tradition of serenading her at her sorority that night. The fellows had Hank to be song leader. While we were singing, I wondered if Margaret would be my girl and wear my pin. So the next day after our rehearsal, while we walked along the campus, I mentioned how well we got along together. And before I knew it, she had talked me into giving her my pin. We had another serenade, and Margaret was mine. From then on, we did everything together. Went to church, worked on the school newspaper, went everywhere. Had a lot of fun and spent a lot of money. Thank you, sir. Drop it again. Duke Super Service. Oh, it's you, Marge. Movies? Well, I'm a little short of cash right now, Marge. Be right with you, sir. Uh, look, how about just a quiet evening alone, sir? Swell. See you at seven. You've been spending a lot on us. So, so why don't I take you this time? Marge, don't be silly. How would that look? Well, why shouldn't I pay part of what we spend together? But most girls... I'm not most girls. And I don't think too much of most girls. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> and, and I'll give you the money now so you can buy the tickets. Oh, no. If you're going to pay, you can buy the tickets. Okay. Hi, Charlie. Hi, George. Two, please. Besides our annual spring formal, where Marge was always my best girl, we would have occasional parties and sorority exchanges each semester. Here, everyone had the opportunity to realize that social fitness is an integral part of the personality of the individual. We shared in the occasions to observe matters of etiquette and social conventions, which allowed our new members to acquire ease and confidence 
and become proficient in the exemplification of the social amenities. Pretty slick, huh? Now that I was pinned to Marge, I didn't usually go to the exchanges, but one time I went along, and afterwards a bunch of us went out for coffee. What are you doing here? I mean, we just had an exchange. I, I tried to call you tonight. I mean, see you at rehearsal, Margie. Marge, you know I wasn't with anyone last night. I was with the whole gang. It's all right, Fred. I didn't even notice who you were with. Why did you speak to me? Well, I, I had nothing to say. Oh, my. I'm going to be gone a few days, Marge. Uh -huh. I was one of the fellows chosen to represent our chapter at our regional conference upstairs. How nice. Uh, I was wondering if you'd do me a favor, Marge. Yes? Know any cute gals I could meet upstairs? I'm too busy to talk now, Fred. I have a lot of work to do. Okay. Now, I'll call you when I get back. Bye. I did miss Margaret while I was gone, but we had a good get-together upstate. Fellows from many of the chapters from all over the country turned out. And besides meeting a lot of our cross-country brothers, we got a good chance to wear out some of our problems and gripes. Believe me, fraternity men have problems too, just like anybody else. Usually they're in the form of dimes and dollars. But soon I was back in the swing of things again. That was the year we won a prize for the best float in the homecoming parade. It took a lot of time and money-saving ideas, but the prize was worth it. Besides sporting events, building something like a float is the best way to learn to work together. I would see Margaret at the show rehearsals, but we couldn't seem to get together anymore. Finally, the big opening night came. We were both excited just before we went on. I remember Marge had stage fright. Fred, am I zipping all the way in the back? Oh, let's see. Fred. Well, I had to fix it. Well, it's almost our cue. Oh, Fred, I'm scared. I'll be with you the whole time we're on. Fred, I, I'm sorry I was rude to you. <laughs> when were you rude? Anyway, it was my own fault. I did miss you while you were gone. Oh. Okay, that's your cue. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Marge was mine again. We were a big success in the show, but I'll always remember it for bringing us back together. And then came Christmas. Like all fraternities and sororities, we had a special party for underprivileged kids in the neighborhood. They got a big kick out of the presents in the tree. Their little smiling faces were a priceless kind of a thanks to us. And then final exams the big event that every college student must face. And the finals became the main topic at that great institution of learning, the bedroom bowl session. Usual topics of conversation were women, or maybe girls. But this time, it was finals. Wow, just imagine, three hours, three hours of solid writing. I think I put down everything I learned in the course, plus some. Three hours, that's nothing. You ought to take a lab final in geology sometime. Takes half a day. I wonder what I'll get in math. <sighs> sure be glad when I graduate. What are you gonna do when you get out of school, Fred? Well, I guess I'll have to look for a good job. Oh, have you uh, talked to Mr. Burton? He was in the same age as you, and now he's with some big company. Oh. He'll probably be at our next alumni meeting. He can probably make it his office boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a start. Hey, turn off the light. I have an eight o'clock final tomorrow. Ah, pipe down. Turn it off! Thank you. Fred. Yeah? What did you say to Margaret when you gave her your pin? Oh, I don't remember. Why? I, I, I'm gonna give mine to Elaine. Well, why don't you? She isn't speaking to me this week. And so it went, sharing all our problems from homework to love life. 
before I knew it, my college days were over. I had come to the end of the beginning of the happiest years of my life. Since I had been initiated, I saw seven more pledge classes become fraternity men. And after each, there would always be our big banquet. And that speech, which I had learned to appreciate. As I listened, I thought of all the things that had happened to me in the last four years. Pledging, becoming a member, working with the team, meeting Marge, and the football game. Football always makes me think of how it takes teamwork and group spirit to lead to victory. Like the fraternity system, a team of fellows helping each other to make their respective marks in the world. In honor of our new members, our graduating class, our fraternity, in honor of the whole fraternity system throughout the entire world, our alumni group has arranged with the college authorities to erect a statue, a monument, right in the middle of the campus. And it gives me great pleasure to announce the results of our election. To pose for the sculptor, your votes have chosen one of our graduating seniors, Fred Clark. Why had the fellows chosen me? I hadn't given or taken any more from our fraternity than the others. But maybe that was the reason that I was just an average member in good standing. Well, it was an honor and a thrill to be chosen. And so today is the day I graduate. Well, it should be over about now. Yup, here comes my cap and gown. Wow, I'd better get back up where I belong. Well, now you understand why I'm here. I'm here to represent something that can't be seen or touched or torn down. The fraternity system. I'm a special kind of statue and I'm mighty proud. Whoops. You know, in a way, I hate to leave. Graduation seems just like one big goodbye. Well, we can't hang around forever. Got to be worthwhile citizens, you know. <laughs> hey, here's our statue. Sure looks like you, Fred. Oh, huh? Poor old Fred. You can never leave now. You'll be on campus forever. <laughs> I suppose so. Hey, let's make a toast to the statue. To a long life. Wait, let's give him some. He looks thirsty, too. Oh. <laughs> well, let's give him some. Come on. <laughs> well, let's turn in our gowns and meet the rest of the gang. Sure, tonight we celebrate. Oh, 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 oh.